This conference will now be recorded. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello, doctors, and welcome to our session today. My name is Rasha Saad, and today we will have stations, four stations related to cesarean section, and they will include a role player station about discussing options of delivery following cesarean section, two viva station on surgical technique and on bladder injury, and the last station will be a teaching station on obtaining a valid consent for a cesarean section. So let's start by the first one. Who would like to practice it? May I, ma'am? Can, okay? can I, doctor? Dr. Dr. Sharda? Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, here is your. Please all mute yourself, only the participating candidate to be unmuted. Can you please all mute? Are you ready, Doctor? Yes. Hello, okay, I'm let's start. Hello, I'm Dr. Shraddha, one of the doctors in the clinic today. May I check in your name and age, please? Uh, I am Mr. John William. I'm 30 years old. And what would you like to be addressed? Mrs. Williams, fine. Mrs. Williams, please call me Shraddha. Okay. Mrs. Williams, I have seen your notes stating that you are pregnant 32 weeks and you are here to discuss your birth options and also that you delivered three years back with cesarean section. Is that true? Yes, true. Uh, Mrs. Williams, will it be all right that I ask you questions to know more about your condition? Then we will discuss yeah. the options available to you. Yeah, it's okay. Can you tell me about your expectations from today's consultation? Yeah, I'm here to discuss about my options uh, following a previous cesarean section. And um, mm -hmm. actually, I believe that having an elective cesarean section will be a good option for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, definitely. I'll come to it. Before that, uh, can you tell me like, how, is, uh, how has your pregnancy been so far? Yeah, everything is fine. And did you name your baby? Sorry? Did you name your baby? No, not yet. Okay. And how is your baby doing in your tummy? No. 
Are you able to convey this movement? Yeah, everything is fine with this current pregnancy. Can you tell me about your previous pregnancy? Yeah, sure. My previous pregnancy was uneventful until the time of the delivery, where I was started my labor spontaneously, but this ended in a difficult forced delivery, and finally having an emergency cesarean section, for which I need to stay in the hospital for about three days for my recovery. Mm -hmm. And how was your recovery? My recovery was fine, apart from discomfort and pain within the sight of the scar. Okay. Okay. And, uh, are you otherwise fit and fine? Dr. Shada, please try to make your voice more clear. I can hear you difficultly. Okay. Okay. Uh, will it be all right that I can assess your notes of the previous pregnancy from the hospital? Yeah. To see the type of. It's okay. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, are you otherwise fit and fine? Yeah. Okay, any allergies? No. Any surgery apart from the cesarean section? No. With whom do you live? With my husband. And is he supportive? Yeah, he's very supportive. Nice to know that. Uh, do you smoke? No. Take alcohol? No. Any recreational drugs? No. And during the last four weeks, have you been feeling low down or depressed? No, I'm fine. Okay. Do you know your weight is to height ratio? Uh, yeah, it's about 26. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to add? No. Okay, thanks for this information. Uh, now I would like to examine you in the presence of a chaperon with your consent. I'll ask my midwife to record your blood pressure and I would like to examine your tummy. I'll, uh, I'd like to see the size of your room and also record your baby's heart rate. Will it be all right? Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, Mrs. Williams, as I can see that you had a previous one cesarean section, uh, may I know how many children? What is the family size you want? Yeah, I'm planning to have at least four children. Okay, so as you had previous one cesarean section and you want to have uh, this, uh, the next this baby also with uh, with surgery. So definitely having uh, so uh, having cesarean section is very good as you can plan the date be, uh, before it, isn't it? Yeah, that's why I'm keen to have a cesarean section, especially, you know, one of my friends was uh, told that having a vaginal first following a cesarean section will be a good option for her. But finally, she ended by having another cesarean section as an emergency. I don't like to go through all of this. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that that your friend had a unpleasant experience, but every patient is different and we will try our best to make you this experience to be a good one. OK. OK. OK, so as I was telling you, previous surgery, we can plan the date. However, in one out of 10, uh, one of 10 women, she can have delivery before that. OK. Oh, it's still. Yeah, and apart from that, the if you want to have a surgery, then the recovery will be delayed, and uh, you need to have uh, you need to have more help during your recovery phase, and uh, and uh, also I want to tell you that in your subsequent pregnancy there would be increased risk need for having a cesarean section. As I can see that you want to have four children. So as mm -hmm. the number of cesarean sections increases, uh, there is an increased risk that the afterbirth may adhere, adhere to your womb, and that may make further surgery more difficult. Uh, you, uh, are you with me? Mrs. Williams, are you with me? Mm, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, 
Uh, I'd like to. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to tell you about the other option also? Okay. Yeah, the other option is to have a normal delivery after cesarean section. Uh, the risk of this uh, being successful is in UK is three in four. And as I can see from the history that uh, mm -hmm. your BMI is on the lower side, not too high, uh, you can have a normal delivery. The advantage of this is that your recovery will be faster. You have an increased chance of having a normal delivery in the subsequent uh, in subsequent pregnancy. Also, you can uh, feed your baby. Uh, you can early best feed your baby, and it would be like a festival-like environment at home, isn't it? A festival-like environment because you will have early recovery and you will be less dependent on other, isn't it? Okay. Uh, there are certain risks also with previous, uh, of going for a normal delivery. As you know, that uh, there is a chance that you can land up in emergency cesarean section. Uh, one in two hundred women can have uh, may have a, um, may have a risk that the scar may be uh, may give away. Also, there is a slightly increased risk of having neonatal uh, death, uh, stillbirth also. It is just uh, same as having uh, delivery of a normal uh, normally for the first time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, uh, so for that it is important. Interruption. Can anyone clear if the voice is? I'm sorry, Dr. Sharda, for interrupted from my side or from the way. I'm sorry, Dr. Sharda, to interrupt you because I can't feel you difficult. Is the voice is interrupted for everyone or it is for my own side? Your voice is interrupted. I... Yeah, it is quite low from Shraddha's side. Hello, am I audible now? Yes, now it is. Yeah, I can feel her voice. <laughs> yes. So, uh... Yeah, so to have those things, uh, so it is important that you deliver in the hospital where we can do uh, good monitoring of your, you as well mm -hmm. as your baby. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Williams, so, uh, do you have any questions? What kind so of far? monitoring you will offer to me if I'm, yeah. I'm going to deliver to the hospital? Why? We will put an IV line. For me? Uh -huh. Yeah, we will put an IV line so that uh, if any medicine is required, we can give that to you. And also we will do the CT, uh, we will uh, record the uh, heart rate of the baby continuously to uh, uh -huh. to see that uh, you, you're progressing well and your baby is coping well in the labor. Uh -huh. Also, uh, the consultant will be there and the baby doctor will be there to take care of you as well as your baby. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you have any questions so far? Actually, I'm still confused. I can't take, can't make my decision right now. We still need time yeah. to decide. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll give you a patient information leaflet of our uh, of the RCOG, so that you can know of our trust, so that you can know more about the condition. And uh, and uh, you can mm -hmm. discuss with your partner. If you wish, I can offer you another appointment with my consultant also if you still have more queries. And after mm. that, whatever you decide, we will support you in that. Also, I'll write back to the our uh, to the co your community midwife about our discussion, okay? Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Sharda. Thank you for your chairing, and I'm sorry for this interruption. Uh, I'm so sorry. I can't hear most of what you said. No, no, no problem. So uh, you did it very well. From the start, you confirmed the aim of the consultation and uh, you introduced your name and your role and where you are in the antenatal clinic. And you take details of, of her previous pregnancy and the events of her previous delivery. And you ask her permission to review her notes. You take proper history taking, especially when you're asking about the BMI, which could affect the success rate of the VBAC especially also when you ask about the fertility wishes and take her wishes in consideration while counseling her about VBAC. 
Uh, and I think that you have good communication with the patient. You can interact to him, to her, and respond to her concern. You did it very well, but there is certain points. If you add it, will be more clear the next time. That uh, when you ask me about uh, how things in this current pregnancy, I told you, I told you everything is fine. That's enough. Don't go through all details about the baby movement, about the ultrasound. Especially, it is written in the scenario outside that her pregnancy now is fine. So save yes. the time to counsel her. Yes. Also, uh, the other thing. Uh, the more details about her previous cesarean section in the hospital. You didn't know why she delivered by cesarean section and at what gestational age and in the type of the cut, if it is upper segment or lower segment. She will not know, but at least ask and tell her that's why I'd like to see your notes because this information could affect our decision or our recommendation. Okay? And uh, how how does she feel about her previous labor? If she's satisfied that she has a civilian section or she don't want to have this again, okay? But apart from that, you fulfill most of the point and you did the counseling very well. You discuss about the risk and benefit of both options. But also when you uh, discussed about having an elective repeated cesarean section, you didn't mention the risk to the baby that the elective cesarean section there is less risk of serious uh, injury to the baby, like in V back, the risk of still first. Although it is still very rare, but you need to tell her also the benefit of a cesarean section, not only the risks. Okay. Okay, and also when you said about uh, uh, she needs to be delivered at hospital, don't wait until the role player asks you what type of monitoring. It is an important point of safety to mention that. We need to monitor you with a, a track on your abdomen or on your tummy to check the baby heart and also to get a, a venous access in your hand, as you said. So instead of putting the rope here to ask you, tell this precaution because these are important points in safety. Okay, Dr. Shardo? Yes, yes, So this scenario also can come in another, uh, and even this scenario appeared before in one of the exam, but not the same like this. It comes when a patient who is asking and insisting to have V back at home. Can you tell me, Dr. Sharda, how can you approach this patient? I am a one, yeah, one patient coming yeah, to you. If she wants V back at home, am I yes, at home. Yeah. yes. If she wants V back, then we will tell her the advantage of V back. Then the mm. disadvantage of VPAC, the advantage of the disadvantage of cesarean, and then the advantage of cesarean. And then we will tell that she will require adequate more monitoring because there is a risk that uh, one in four women may require um, cesarean section. And the baby mm -hmm. will also require monitoring. And these facilities are not at hospital. So mm -hmm. um, it would be a good idea to deliver in the hospital. If still, still she insists that I want a normal delivery at home, so mm -hmm. I'll offer her an appointment with the consultant. And after that, whatever she decides, uh, we can uh, support her in that. But and in that case, we can to have it at home. Yes. She can deliver at home. Then an ambulance will be ready at home. Uh, and if there is any such event which requires hospital delivery, she will be transferred to the hospital immediately. Is there any other option to put way between your recommendation and her decision? Yeah, the other thing is that she can deliver in the stand a stand along yes. midwifery yes. unit yes. where yes. there is only yes. midwives. Okay. Well then, Dr. Sharda, thank you for your chain. Okay. So in this scenario, in this station, when I read this station outside in the two minutes, what I'd like to highlight is there is the domain of information and gathering, so I'd like to go also details of the history taking, not focused history. There is information and gathering. I'd like to highlight some important information as a station, and instead of asking the patient again about this information, I will only confirm this slide. Uh, instead of starting the station, hello, my name is Dr. Rasha the Registrar. Can I confirm your name? To save time, I can see, hello, is it Mrs. Jan William? My name is Dr. Rasha. Then confirm the data. I understand that you are now 32 years. You have one previous pregnancy ended by cesarean section. Your daughter is three years, and you are here to discuss about option. So it's better to discuss with her or confirm with her what information you already know in the uh, station outside instead of asking her to save your time. Okay? 
So when I am in the two minutes outside the station, I will highlight important points like her age, the domain tested, uh, that I don't have details regarding her previous delivery, so I will put in my mind that I'd like to ask about details of her previous delivery. I can see that she's now 32 weeks, and also, Dr. Sharda, you missed this point. This woman is now 32 weeks. I'd like to put plan for her, for the remaining part of her pregnancy. I will tell her that you will continue your um, uh, follow up with the midwife. And if by fourth week of your pregnancy, you will not start labor spontaneously, at this time, we need to have another appointment to discuss your option because you can discuss with her now about induction of labor. So you need also to put plan for the remaining part of her pregnancy. Okay, so this is how I can this is how I can read this station in the only two minutes, highlight the main points and put in my mind skeleton to go through inside the station in order to save my time, the only 10 minutes to finish the station in. And another also uh, uh, part for you, Dr. Sharda, uh, patient information leaflet and support group, I said before, instead of... Uh, 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 point when you start the account missing the mark of this guaranteed uh, before finishing it your consultation i will give you patient information leaflet and put your support group uh, in uh, with women who uh, would like who have a previous cesarean section so i will give you this by the end because if time finished you can at least take the this guaranteed mark for leaflet and support group okay so again what are the main points in this station from the start of the consultation, we need to ask about the main concern of the patient. Where this patient stand on? If she's with elective cesarean section or with VBAC? You need also to ask about fertility wishes by asking her how many babies you are hoping to have in future. And as Dr. Sharda did, I will use this information in counseling her. As she, uh, as she did, she told her that because you are willing to have four babies in the future, so having a vaginal birth after cesarean section will be a good option. So you can use the information in your counseling. Also, it's important to find all details about the previous cesarean section, especially why the cesarean section was done for her. Any complication of care during her delivery or even after the cesarean, type of cut, if it is upper segment or lower segment. That's why we need to review the notes. And how do you feel about previous labor? If she's satisfied by having cesarean section or she don't like to have this uh, um, experience to be repeat, repeated again. Important also to ask about support at home and current pregnancy, if it's any uh, complication occurring in this pregnancy, which will increasing uh, the chance to have again repeated cesarean section, or as in this case, it is an eventual pregnancy. And it's also important to ask about her poking PMR. Then the main point of safety here is to discuss about the risk of benefit of both options. The benefit and risk of VBAC. In the start, I will tell her that the success rate is three in four. When the role player told you, my, one of my friends ended in an emergency cesarean section, I will tell her, yeah, this can occur only in one in four. But on the other hand, three out of four is still will be able to have successful vaginal births. Then go through the benefit. Like you will have greater chance to have in your future pregnancy, your person to be by vaginal delivery. You will have quicker recovery, shorter hospital stay, more likely to have skin to skin contact and successful breastfeeding. You will avoid the risks of operation and there is less initial breathing problem to your pain. Remember all that when you are counseling about VBAC or repeated cesarean section, remember to mention things related to the mother and to the baby and to her future pregnancy. So benefit to the mother and to the baby and for the future pregnancy. And the same, the risk. The risk in VBAC, emergency cesarean section, which is one in four, higher chance of blood transfusion. And remember, when you ask a role player about blood transfusion, don't forget to ask, do you have any concern with blood transfusion? It is also point of safety. You don't, for, don't forget to tell her about that the scar may separate or tear in one in 200. And you can take this part to tell her that's why it's important to have your delivery in hospital with monitoring and with accessibility to the theater. Then discuss about the risk to the baby, 
there is a still birth risk which is only one in 1,000 compared to two in 1,000 abbreviated cesarean section, and you may need assisted birth, and you may experience a tear in the muscles that controls the aims. So try to be uh, uh, to give the patient all the information needed. Tell her about all the benefits, but on the same time, tell her about all the risks. Then go to the other option, which is the cesarean section. The benefit, small risk of uterine rupture, and the less risk of serious risk to the baby, only two in 1,000. But on the other hand, many risks. Repeated cesarean section may become more tricky because of scar tissue. And this scar tissue can make a real risk of bladder and bowel injury. And please, most of you, when counsel the woman about the risk of bladder and bowel, you said, mention this in a matter that it is a common thing. Try to be clear. Tell her that in repeated cesarean section, due to scar tissue, there is a risk of bowel and bladder, but it is still a rare risk. Don't emphasize this, it's a rare risk. But the common is you will find you may suffer a wound infection, you may have discomfort in the scar, you may need blood transfusion, and at any surgery, there is a risk of blood clot, longer recovery, and your future pregnancy more likely to be by a repeated cesarean section. And they tell here about the complication with adenine placenta and uh, the risk of hysterectomy. Don't forget the risk to the baby, like cutting the baby's skin, and the baby may need, may suffer initial breathing problem. That's why. If the woman wanted to go for elective cesarean section, it will be after 39 weeks. Don't forget to tell her about how you will deliver her in a hospital with availability of CTG and neonatal resuscitation and immediate access to the theater and the IV access. Here is the precaution and all of those points are important in safety. Don't forget that this patient is only 32 weeks pregnant, so we need to put blame for the first pregnancy. If this woman don't start labor spontaneously within fourth week, we will arrange another appointment to discuss your option. Because if we offer her induction, don't forget to tell her there is two to three fold increased risk of uterine rupture and 1.5 fold increased risk of cesarean delivery in case of induced or augmented labor compared with a spontaneous VBAC. Don't forget to tell her to follow her pregnancy with the midwife and attend to the hospital in case of she have any labor pain or whatever uh, red symptoms that she can come to the hospital and give her with the patient information leaflet and support group. And don't forget to document in her note the agreed plan for this patient. And you can arrange another meeting with the consultant if she still are not able to make her decision. Hopefully this station is now clear. Anyone have any question related to it? Dr. Rasa, I have one question. Do we need to speak about induction of labor also now only? Yes, you need because she is still now 32 weeks. And there is a possibility that she may go through 40 weeks, especially if she opt for waiting until it's continuous onset of labor. So at least highlight that she is now 32 weeks. So if by 40 weeks you will not go into labor continuously, at this time we can discuss about the option of getting your labor started off. But there is a risk of, as I said, two to three fold increased risk of rupture uterus, 1.5 fold of having failed the cesarean section. You need to highlight this, yes. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Is it okay? Clear now? Any more questions? Shall we move? Okay. Who would like to share? Yeah, Dr. Rasha, I have a doubt. What about standalone uh, midwife unit for a previous CS? Can we keep yes. that option? Okay. Another case which I've been before, uh, a role player from asking to have be back at home. She's insisted. She was a difficult patient. She's insisted to have me back at home, and she refused to have it at hospital. Still, you will counsel her about that it is necessary, and even I will tell you approach while uh, uh, counseling this woman. Try to make the patient with your side. Tell her that yes, I agree with you that having a vaginal birth following cesarean section is a good option because you can enumerate the benefit, 
But at the same time, it carries a risk. Then you'll hear about the risk of the back, like tear in the um, uh, rupture of the skull or whatever the risk. That's why it's recommended to have your delivery at hospital. So you will take the patient to your side. I agree with you that the back is a good option because the benefit, but there is a risk. That's why it's recommended to be delivered in the hospital. But at this time, if the patient is still insistent, you will tell her that still there is another option, which is the midwifery unit which will be just upstairs from the uh, theater in case if we need access to the theater. And in this station, you need to ask her about options at home. How far the home from the hospital? How uh, much it will take if we need to transfer you by the ambulance to the hospital? And you can use this information during counseling. This says that it is about 30 minutes from hospital. So then uh, Dr. Rasha, it's not only the distance no, which matters. See, you know, it's even the... Wrong with you, KB, with the... you. Didn't you, don't you... Just imagine if something, when you think that 30 minutes will affect your safety and your baby, how you can counsel this difficult patient. But by the end, if she insisted, you can tell oh. like to involve my consultant. Am I clear? More than that, because the because the previous years she needs a CTG monitoring. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. No. No. It's even the monitoring yeah, I per you. se. It's even uh, coming to the monitoring per se. It's uh, in a midwifery unit. Uh, we don't have a, a CTG facility. So in such cases, can we keep? Uh, can we give an option of delivering her in a midwifery unit? At least you can make the option available to deliver here at the midwifery unit because this appeared before and this woman was insisted. By any way, you cannot deliver here at home. So giving a midwifery unit as option will be good instead of having delivery at home. But still, to be safe, you will tell her that I'd like to involve my consultant in such a decision. But you will tell her that, yes, you can deliver a midwifery unit. Although it is not safe as in hospital, but you only give the patient option and she is the one who decides. Okay, doctor. Okay, Dr. Rasha. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Nifisa. Thank you. Any Dr. Rasha, can I, can I share uh, the next station? Yes, sure. Yes, sure, Dr. Sharaf. Okay. So, here is your kid. Now you have two minutes. There is another table. Would like to? Would you like to see? Yes. Here is the question.
Can you read it, Dr. Sebastian? Uh, yes, Dr. Rasha. Can I have the first slide? slide? The other slide, okay. Can I stop? Okay, but take the questions. Yeah. Okay, let's start. Uh, uh, hello, I'm uh, Dr. Shagusta, one of the exam candidates. I read the scenario and I'm ready for the start. Okay, here is your question. Answer all of them. Uh, so uh, the immediate steps that have to be has to be taken when uh, a, a bladder injury has occurred is first thing first uh, I'll uh, inform the anesthetist about the incident. I'll tell him that uh, I'm having some. I mean, I'm, I'm suspecting a, a probable bladder injury, and uh, that the surgery may take more time. And uh, to I mean. Uh, uh, also, uh, that he may require to uh, give more anesthesia to the patient or give more sedation to the patient or even, I mean, uh, antibiotics also. Uh, the next thing is I'll inform the, uh, the scrub nurse uh, that uh, that I will require a, a, a extra pair of instruments and that a complication has occurred. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll also, uh, then I'll uh, also, uh, uh, I'll also inform a consultant uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the injury has occurred, and uh, that uh, I mean, I would uh, use the SBAR format in informing the consultant, and that mm -hmm. I'm facing complications. And uh, mm -hmm. also, also I may require uh, uh, I may require uh, to send certain labs, and also I may require blood. Uh, so I would uh, request for that also. I would ask the circulating nurse to inform the lab, and. Uh, 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 so and uh, after my consultant comes, uh, the decision to call the urologist uh, will be taken by the consultant, the urologist okay. or the general surgeon. Mm -hmm. And also the immediate step is if the patient is awake and if the patient is in regional anesthesia like a spinal or a epidural, I'll gently mm -hmm. inform the patient that a complication has occurred. But uh, we have a team and we are trying to manage it uh, to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, if there is a, I mean, uh, I mean, I'll also ask somebody to keep a record of uh, whatever is happening in the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is the surgical approach in the management of the bladder injury? Uh, uh, so, I mean, uh, Dr. Darsha, can I have the first slide, please? Mm -hmm. Can I have the plus first slide? The, the other slide, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so my next approach would be that if it is safe to deliver, so uh, I would, uh, I would if without injuring the bladder further, I would uh, deliver the baby safely. And uh, uh, if, uh, I mean, if my consultant has come by that time, then uh, the decision to call the urologist or the general surgeon or so, to undertake the bladder so uh, repair. Uh, what do you mean by if it is safe to deliver the baby, I will deliver the baby. Will you deliver the baby or not? Uh, uh, yes, I will deliver the baby because of course uh, the, I mean, um, if, I mean, uh, but without injuring the bladder further, I would try, I would okay. be safe and I would not injure, injure the bladder further. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I have the next slide? You will not need this slide again. Just go through the question, okay? Yes, yes, yes. Is your question? Yes. Uh, so the next thing is, what is the surgical approach? Uh, so my surgical approach would be uh, that um, uh, using uh, two layers closure, closure with uh, either two zero or three zero uh, polyclastic sutures, and a running long lock suture will be used, and uh, the sutures uh, will be uh, placed um, 0.5 to one centimeter apart, and uh, mm -hmm. also I mean figure of uh, some uh, water a uh, water water tight closure uh, will be attempted, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, the, uh, we have to make sure that the that the sutures are not. I mean, uh, the ureters are safe, and mm -hmm. uh, if they required, uh, intraoperative uh, cystoscopy may also be done. 
and then uh, how would you manage this patient with a bladder injury post operatively post operatively uh, the patient uh, will be debriefed the family will be debriefed the staff will be debriefed and then uh, also the documentation uh, appropriate documentation will be maintained and uh, if uh, mm, uh because the patient may need to uh, stay for a i mean appropriate uh, venous thromboembolism uh, prophylaxis mm-hmm. will be given to the patient and mm-hmm. the catheter will be there for uh, there will be an indwelling catheter for around 10 to 14 days and mm-hmm. after uh, after the i mean after 10 to 14 days then uh, we will check whether the uh, repair is i mean uh, successful or not mm-hmm. and if the in uh, so what are the issues that need to be addressed post operatively post operatively i'll uh, file an incident report because a, a complication has occurred and when will uh, you also remove the catheter when will you remove it i will remove the catheter uh, in, uh, around after after 14 days and uh, also i would uh, explain to the uh, nurse that about the catheter care and to avoid thinking mm-hmm. and uh, yes. Uh, maintain i mean proper uh, hygiene and uh, the catheter care will also be explained to the patient if the patient goes home with the catheter mm-hmm. uh what are the issues that you need to be addressed post operatively uh, post operatively i need to file an incident report because the complication has occurred and i will be honest with the patient i will do my duty of candor i will explain that the complication mm-hmm. has occurred but it has been managed and mm-hmm. uh, i would uh, uh, tell the uh, patient that uh, uh we have filed an incident report and we will be mm-hmm. keeping the patient in loop of uh, what the uh, i mean this uh, report uh, i mean what the investigation is uh, going to be i mean uh, what the results of the investigation are going to be and then uh, of course proper documentation and uh, mm-hmm. uh, debriefing of the staff patient and also the family Mm-hmm. Uh, then the next question is how will you suspect unidentified urinary tract injury post operatively uh, so uh, uh, so post operatively uh, unidentified urinary tract injury uh, can be identified by if the patient has any complaints like uh, if she is uh, with a catheter and if she has uh, hematuria or uh, if she has uh, i mean uh, anuria or oliguria and uh, Mm, then uh, 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 any I mean raised uh, levels of uh, creatinine, and uh, if if there is an indwelling drain and if the drain shows some uh, mm-hmm. uh, urinary fluid coming out of it, then this is how I will suspect a uh, urinary tract injury. Post mm-hmm. operative. Uh, okay. Would you like to add anything? also uh, in the long term uh, it may lead to formation of vesico vaginal fistula or a uh, or a ureter vaginal fistula if the injury is in the mm-hmm. uh, ureter so the patient yes. will complain mm-hmm. of uh, urine like uh, discharge from uh, the vagina yes and mm-hmm. to, to confirm this uh, we can do a ct iv uh, ct ivu okay mm-hmm. Would you give this patient antibiotics or? Uh, yes, of course. I'll give her antibiotics. Mm-hmm. When you will start it? Uh, the antibiotics uh, will be started. Uh, I mean, will be started immediately after the surgery. After the surgery, okay. Anything you'd like to add? uh also uh, uh, i mean to confirm that the re- uh, healing has has been proper we need to again confirm it uh, with a intravenous urogram after uh, after the after the 14 days mm-hmm. yeah. anything else uh thank you okay thank you dr shabaf Thank you, doctor. Okay, so uh, you did it very well, and still you have about forty seconds, and uh, it can happen in the exam, and you still have time in front of the consultant who is examining you, so you at least 
be calm until the 10 minutes finished. Okay, and if you remember anything related to the station, you can say it, but don't repeat yourself. Okay, and it can yeah. happen okay in the exam that you will only have paper of questions in front of you, and the examiner will not say anything. He will give you the 10 minutes to answer your question, like I did. He will not prompt you and he will not ask you. You can manage your own time. So this can happen. You have a paper and you only uh, read and answer. No any feedback from the examiner or any comments, okay? Okay. So, Shabufta, you did it very well and you cover most of the point apart from some small things. We will go through it one by one. So, highlight when you read this station is what you you will let the two minutes. I imagine this is very infection. Baby, at least you you will not feed a little. So don't forget to deliver the. No, don't add to the blood injury. But wait for, uh, for the phone. Uh, if it is safe, I will deliver the baby. No, consultant. So then don't, uh, don't say like you said. You will deliver the baby. You will, if you wait until the consultant, the baby will die. So it's an emergency cesarean section, and you are still five. You are competent to deliver the baby. So it's an immediate action. I will deliver the baby without causing any harm in the bladder injury. I will highlight that it's two previous cesarean sections. So. That's why it's uh, it's clear fluid is steaming, so I'm suspecting an other operation. Uh, that's the a bladder injury. Then it is written that it's an injury, which is confirmed. Then uh, then I see that there is five questions. Sometimes in the exam you will not find the question outside the station. When you enter the cubicle, the examiner will give you the paper of the question. But at least you need to put in your mind that there are five questions. So try to manage your time. Don't give any question more than two minutes. Okay. So here are the important points that needed to be highlighted. It's an emergency cesarean section for previous two cesarean section, and it is confirmed that it is bladder injury, and I have five questions. So when I enter the cubicle, I will um, say, hello, my name is Dr. Rasha, and that's it. Don't say I am one of the examiner in the exam, I am one of the candidate who is performing the exam. Of course, the examiner will know that. Don't waste time in, in this uh, uh, introduction, long introduction. Just say your name. My name is Rasha. That's enough. Okay, so the first question, and whenever you find a question in a wireless station like this, what is your immediate action? What are the immediate steps? Remember also, in immediate action, you will go through three main points, communication, resuscitation, and confirming the diagnosis if it's not confirmed. Here in this station, it is confirmed it is bladder injury, but sometimes it will not be confirmed, and it will be like you suspect or you see uh, fluid sewing through, through the intraperitoneal, coming out in the intraperitoneal intra cavity. So here the diagnosis is not confirmed. So your immediate action will go through three points, communication, resuscitation, and the confirmation of the diagnosis. Here the diagnosis is confirmed, so what I will do only, resuscitation and communication. And remember, you have a mother and baby, so resuscitation will be for both the mother and the baby. So communication, who I will communicate with, with all the theater team, telling them that I'm facing complications, there is a blood injury. I will communicate with the anesthetist, and the here's point of safety is that I'd like to resuscitate the woman by asking the anesthetist to start immediately intraoperative antibiotics. It needs to be started intraoperative, not postoperative. So here is the resuscitation to the mother. Resuscitation to the baby will include delivery of the baby. I will proceed to the delivery of the baby and close the uterus also. I will not leave the uterus bleed until the consultant arrives. I am ST5. I will deliver the baby and close the uterus and wait until the consultant arrives. But this is emergency. Need to deliver baby and close the uterus. Here is the resuscitation to the mother and the baby. Communication, as you said, I will communicate with the theater team, with the anesthetist, with the consultant, and you did well by saying using this part all. And you need to determine where is the site and the extent of the blood injury. Sometimes the examiner may ask you, how are you going to tell the consultant about the, this complication? So you can explain how you are going to apply Spartan. Like, uh, I will uh, call the consultant, or someone will call the consultant. I am uh, uh, Russia from the theater. I'm facing a case of blood injury during cesarean section. So then give him background about the condition and tell him what you did. Um, I deliver the baby, I close the uterus and waiting for your support and ask for her or for his recommendation. 
then you need to alert at least the urology team. Someone need to alert the urology team. Whether the urology team will come or not, it will be decided by the consultant. But the urology team need to be aware that there is bladder injury. Also, if the mother is awake, you will inform her. So here's your immediate action, communication and resuscitation. Coming to the next question, what is the surgical approach in management of bladder injury? You did it very well. You said that uh, we need to roll out ureteric and trigon injury because if it is the case, here the repair needs to be by a urologist. And it will be two layers approach using absorbable suture. When you are asked about surgical approach, don't forget to mention what type of suture material you will use. And as you said, we need fine sutures, Vicarin 3 O. And the repair of the bladder is like repair of the sedarian section. It is continuous. And the second layer usually will be carry the first one, as we did in the CS. And as you said, the closure needs to be watertight. But Dr. Shabofta, you forgot to tell that we need to make sure that the closure is watertight. So you need to test it with methylene blue test. And if there is leakage of the dye, we will do additional suture material. So in the surgical approach, we did it very well, but don't forget to mention, I'd like to confirm that the closure is watertight by doing the methylene blue test. And if there is further leaking, how would you manage? We will need to do additional sutures. This patient with bladder injury, post here, patient only. What I will do with this patient? I'd like to debrief the patient about what happened. Important point, don't forget, is the catheter. And it is 14 to 14 days. But Dr. Shabofta, you don't remove it after 14 days. You need first to do trans catheter cyst retrogram to make sure that the tear is already healed. So you are about to remove the catheter. But if still there is no proper healing, you can leave it for a further one week. Or you can seek advice from the urology team. So don't remove the catheter unless you confirm it that the tear is already healed. Don't forget to give the patient antibiotic and give clear instruction, as you said to the uh, nurse, that the catheter may be plugged by small plug. So care of the catheter and the flushing if needed. Don't forget to do thrombophilaxis as you did, rubber mobilization of the woman, and to follow up when she be discharged, follow up when to come urgent in case of any complication happen, if she suffered from fever or blood in urine, and also she will come for follow up in the clinic. And don't forget to tell the patient about her condition, give her leaflet, and put her in contact with support group. Here is your management with the patient. What other issue need to be addressed postoperatively? As you said, documentation, duty of conduct, do a reflective practice about what happened with my supervisor and write it in my e portfolio and write down an incident report. The other thing is, how will you suspect unidentified urinary tract injury postoperatively? And this is the most cases that we cannot identify it intraoperative. If it is minor injury, you can see this patient suffering from resistant loin pain. She may suffer from abdominal distension, heavy blood stain urine, persistence, and she may have poor urine output in presence of normal postoperative observation because the urine here is leaking in the peritoneal cavity. Or she may present later, as you said, with, uh, 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 with a vistula and come suffering from urine draining vaginally. Okay, you covered, Dr. Shagufta, most of this point, but don't forget about delivery of the baby, about confirming the leak of the methylene below while doing the repair. Don't forget about the antibiotic. And don't forget before removing the catheter to do methylene, uh, uh, sorry, to do uh, intravenous cystiorisrogram. So, yes, you have any questions? Thank you, Dr. Shabotan. Thank you, Dr. Ashton. You're welcome. Any question? Uh, Ma'am, I have one question, please. Yes. In that case, there is emergency cesarean section, so we have to deliver the baby. If uh, by chance, if there was elective cesarean section, then what we have to do? Still, we have to deliver the baby and close the uterus? If you do the injury before opening the uterus, before opening the uterus, and the, it is The review with his circulation. So, in a cesarean section, no need to hurry. Uterus is closed. If you find that it, you will harm more, you will sue and proceed with delivery of the baby. But if it is emergency, you, if you are not confident to do, you need to deliver. Especially if you already proceed with the delivery, so do elective, you don't open the uterus, but once you open, 
मैम ड्यू टू योर वॉइस ब्रेकेज आई कैन नॉट हेयर यू प्रॉपरली हेलो 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 यस मैम मैम योर वॉइस इज ब्रेकिंग आई आई कुड नॉट हेयर यू यस यस कैन यू हेयर माय वॉइस ओनली नाउ नाउ योर लास्ट सेंटेंस आई कैन हेयर आई सेड दैट इफ इट इज इमरजेंसी यू नीड टू डेवर ओके ओके बट इफ इट इज इलेक्टिव सिजेरियन सेक्शन एज लॉन्ग एज यू डोंट ओपन द यूट्रस and you find that you you cause a blood of injury and you are not confident to proceed with the delivery so if you would like to wait for the consultant arrive it's okay as long as the uterus is not open and the baby is not in an emergency situation you can wait at the time but if it is emergency you need to proceed okay Am I understood sense? yes ma'am definitely okay. thank you ma'am and ma'am uh, one you request i would like to share the next station if that's okay okay Yeah, that's okay. Uh, other one, Doctor Bijay, uh, added mute chart. Yeah, you can add mute chart to follow the patient. Thank you for this notification. Okay, let's move to the next hello, station. Hello, hello, ma'am. Hello, yes? ma'am. In this patient, in this patient, there is no need of HDU management, right? No need for HDU. The patient will be in post of ward only. In sorry, I can't hear your voice. In 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 what? <laughs> Hello. This patient uh, does not need post-operative HDU management, right? If you no no no. If it is a stable, you can manage it in the in the ward uh, yeah, or to be admitted in the department. Not not necessary to be in the HDU. No. As long as it is not, uh, she is stable, no bleeding, she is stable, no complication apart from this injury. Yes. And uh, any operative or post-operative complications, we should not talk about uh, enhanced recovery program. Is that right, ma'am? Enhanced recovery program. Hello. 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 Hello.
please mute yourself. Okay, until Dr. Shard type her question, we can start the next station and I will reply on your question, Dr. Shard. Okay? So now, Doctor, you have two minutes. Read the scenario and I will give you uh, the questions. Here is your question and now you have two minutes. So, Dr. Sharp, the question that can we say that in post-operative period, we will ask the midwife to keep on catheter that there is no kinking clots and keep an eye on input and output? Yes, sure. We said that. We said that. We will give her clear instructions about the catheter, especially if the catheter becomes clogged because of blood clot, she needs to do flushing for the catheter. Yeah, you need to mention about care of the catheter. Is it clear now, Dr. Sharda? Okay, welcome. Dr. Somria, would yes, you start this? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Dr. Sumaira. I'm one of the exam candidates and I'm ready for my discussion. Okay. Here's your questions. Okay. So, uh, indication of elective cesarean section can be maternal and fetal. Maternal mm -hmm. include uh, previous two or more cesarean section previous history of uterine rupture or classic uterine incision or any uterine surgery which led to breach in the cavity like myomectomy and uh, placenta previa major mm -hmm. and maternal include if the baby is a macrosomic baby if primary breach or so there are primary? other sorry what do you mean by macrosomic baby? Macrosomic baby, if more than uh, 5 kg weight, then can we proceed for elective cesarean section after discussing with pros and cons with the mother? Mm -hmm. These can be the indication of elective cesarean section. The other mm -hmm. is uh, counseling of the woman. If without indication patient is requesting cesarean section, first of all, uh, I have to make the clear for the patient that I will respect his autonomy, her autonomy. And uh, definitely I will inform everything, every risk for the patient mm -hmm. about the cesarean mm -hmm. section in terms of especially future fertility. Like uh, I will inform risk and benefit. I will inform about the option vaginal delivery and cesarean section i will not try to i will definitely not patronizing the patient because the patient definitely has his autonomy but mm -hmm. i will inform all the risk especially the serious risk that mm -hmm. include the placenta accreta uterine rupture in the next pregnancy and uh, can lead mm -hmm. hysterectomy even the risk of death i should explain if the still patient is insisting that i will also Mm -hmm. I will also try to explore the reason why she is she want uh, to have the cesarean section sometime just after relieving the misunderstanding patient can uh, think in some other perspective so and mm -hmm. still if the patient want that I will uh, give the option to discussion with my consultant if the she has the uh, fear of the normal delivery then uh, service uh, professional service psychological service can help Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. still, if the patient will want, then definitely we have to go for patient wish mm -hmm. after informing okay. everything. Ha yes, ma'am. 
what if your consultant is against having a cesarean section on maternal requests, what you will do? If the like we, we will give appointment to both of them to discuss if still he doesn't want that and patient uh, have the wish for that that uh, we can refer to other consultant mm -hmm. okay. how and the patient should be prepared for cesarean section uh, in to make to have them safe surgery i have to do uh, see the history to see for any risk factor just to make more patient more safe like whether she has i will see the history examination and investigation mm -hmm. i will divide my things to that and on history i will see any contraindication any previous surgery and uh, whether she's anemic or not and any reservation mm -hmm. for blood transfusion and uh, mm -hmm. then on, on examination i will see uh, the presentation and uh, ctg and after that i we will uh, do the patient we will take the blood for full blood count mm -hmm. blood group for mm -hmm. ntd purpose also and then uh, full who checklist should be done and uh, antibiotic prophylactically should be given 30 minutes before uh, incision and uh, catheterize the patient and acid should be given according to hospital mm -hmm. protocol and mm -hmm. uh, anesthetic should see the patient this and uh, mm -hmm. a placental side should be will you do uh, for any doing group and save or group and save. do group and save yes ma'am mm -hmm. yes, okay. if she is not if she is low risk if there is a placenta previa or high risk then i will do cross match Perfect. what are the incision yes. uh there can be a uh, classical uh, in skin incision can be vertical or low line joel cohel incision mm -hmm. is at the superiority Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, abdominal entry I, after the skin incision, I will uh, try to open the blunt entry to enter what the abdomen. What other Sorry? kind of skin injury you know about the from joint pain? You said joint pain. What other skin incision you know? Uh, I know, but that is not at the top of the, my head. I know we are doing, but okay, at, at that okay. time I cannot. <laughs> okay. No and. Uh, uh, I will enter the blunt entry to the abdomen mm -hmm. after the incision. This is you try, you try an incision, lower segment, and try an incision. I will try to, uh, we will, uh, Vazaiko, you try and fold, we will open the uterus at that, that area and then we give a nick to the uterus. And then we will also open with the uh, blunt. We will extend the incision with the blunt. Uh, Mm -hmm. way is to avoid the injury to the baby and mm -hmm. it is the second oh it is the step how do you deliver the baby where i will put my domain i will uh, correct the asymmetry of the uterus i put mm -hmm. my dominant hand inside uh, mm -hmm. to hold the head of the baby and then deliver the baby mm -hmm. If that mm -hmm. is second stage cesarean section, then definitely I need another manure or maneuver also. Placenta we will remove mm -hmm. with control cord traction. Mm -hmm. And uh, uterus closure will close the uterus. Yes, active management centosinone 0.5 mm -hmm. 0 0.5 international okay. unit. Sorry, five international mm -hmm. unit. IV. And mm -hmm. uh, you try and uh, I will close the uterus in double layer uh, with vitral one, and then uh, no need to uh, if no need to close the peritoneum, we'll close the rectus uh, with vitral, and uh, you, I will take a 0.5 to one centimeter apart stitches in continuous locking uh manner and then uh, if the uh, fat thickness is less than two centimeter then no need to close that and after that uh, we will skin suture skin uh, at uh, subcutaneous continuous manner mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Will you are about to put rain, doctor? Will you put rain? If needed, uh, it is not uh, always necessary to put a drain. If I will see there is a hemorrhage and there is a difficulty in controlling hemorrhage and the patient is increased risk of bleeding, like inherited uh, thrombophilia or any other indication that I feel that it is increased risk of bleeding, then I will put. And what type of drain you are about to put if you will put it? Non-active drain, non-suction drain. Okay. Would you like to add anything? Um, I'm thinking. Okay, so what type of vessel could be injured during entry the abdomen? And you will be careful not to injure these vessels. What vessel is a cutaneous layer? What vessel under the rectus muscle? And how you will avoid their injury? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. I okay. And how can you avoid the bladder injury? Bladder injury can be avoided by, like we already catheterized the patient, catheterized the uh, patient before a uh, cesarean section, and mm -hmm. uh, while we will uh, re remove the vesico vaginal, uh, sorry. Uh, that fold vesica you try and fold we will open that and we will try to uh, retract the bladder with the help of drawings yes okay and what if you found that there is adhesions when you enter the abdomen you find adhesions around the bladder because especially if it's a case of previous cesarean section what are you about to dissect this and uh, proceed with your incision in the lower part or what you will do we will first of all try to do safely uh, to uh, clean the uh, to do a, with the help of scissor sharp incision we will try to separate the bladder but if uh, by by chance we and if i cannot do that i will ask my senior if my senior still cannot do then we have to give upper a bit upper incision what do you mean by upper incision? Will you open like upper uh, transverse incision? Transverse incision, but uh, uh, above then the lower seg uterine segment. So it is in the upper segment. Will you do it in the upper segment or in the lower segment? Your time is out. But answer this question: Will you do this incision in the upper uterine segment or lower uterine segment? What is the difference if you are going to do for a previous cesarean section and for fresh cesarean section without any scar? When you will open the uterus? Uh, I will do, we will might do classic. Classic, okay. Okay, doctor, thank you for your sharing. Would you like to add anything? No, ma'am. Okay, you did it very well and you cover most of the points, but you forget some important points. So I will go through all of them and be with me. So I will ask again you for your feedback, okay? Okay. So uh, here in this station, we have eight questions. So try to manage your time. She did, she did it well by managing the time. Especially if I said the examiner may not ask you anything and give you the paper of the questions and you will manage your time. He will not push you to go through the question. You will manage your own time. So let's start by the indication of the section. You did it well by mentioning that it could be for maternal causes or fetal causes, but remember, that we do cesarean section if the baby weight more than 4.5 kg in maternal diabetes. Okay, so the indication may be maternal, like uh, uh, if the patient has medical condition. So remember, maternal, like diabetes, and the baby is more than 4.5 kg, or like infections, if the patient has maternal HIV and high viral load, and especially if she's not taking retroviral medication. So here is an indication for cesarean. Another infection, like primary genital herpes in the third trimester. Fetal indication could be malpresentation, like preach or transverse lie in both days. But please add if external chimeric version is contraindicated or has failed. Another indication may be, as you said, the sense of between grade three and four, or if the woman had previous major shoulder dystocia after counseling her about her options. So here are the indications. You mentioned most of them, but be careful about macrosomia. It is clear if the patient has maternal diabetes and the baby weight more than 4.5 kilograms, but don't say it general for macrosomia, okay? So 
you mentioned it very well when uh, I asked you about if a woman requesting to have a cesarean section, we will offer her proper counseling about over all the risk and benefits. And don't forget when you counsel a woman that you tell her at the same time about the benefit of cesarean section. You most of us emphasize about the risk of cesarean section, but be um, be clear with the information you give to the patient or tell her about the benefit also. Still, the cesarean section has benefit of reduced risk of perineal pain, urinary incontinence, and uterine vaginal prolapse. But the risk for sure more than the benefit. Okay, and if still the woman uh, has fear from childbirth and need a counselor, we need to offer her counseling. Still, if she is insisted to have cesarean section, we need to give her the option. And if the consultant reviews, we can do another referral. But don't forget that when mother come requesting cesarean section, emphasize that this will be after 39 weeks of pregnancy. So till uh, about the time when you will do it on maternal request. Coming to the preparation, you mentioned most of them about uh, the time of the cesarean section in elective, it will be after 39 weeks. We will discuss with the woman about the anesthesia and the investigation we do for black found group and safe. We do only cross and match if the patient is high risk to have bleeding, like if it is a case of uh, placenta accreta, for example. Don't forget enhanced recovery program, as long as it's an elective operation. So during the preparation, you will counsel the woman about enhanced recovery program. As you said, we give her H2 blocker, prophylactic antibiotic. Don't forget this fatal mistake, WHO surgical checklists. Whenever you mention about any operation, don't forget WHO checklists. And another question for you, and this question appeared before. When I stayed in the exam, I will did the WHO surgical checklist. The question was, do you think that by doing the WHO checklist, we will improve the patient safety? Can you answer this question? Yes, it will improve. Can you answer? Through how? Why? Don't say yes or no. Why? Uh, no, I don't know. Can anyone answer? This? Okay. Yes, this Dr. Rasha. Do you think the WHO checklist we can improve the patient safety? Yes. Yes, Dr. Yes, Dr. Rasha. Yes, we'll check. It goes by no? by W. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yes, I hear you. Can you can you hear me? Yes. So that means. Um, all uh, team members, they will uh, yeah, I hear you. Themselves. Yeah, they will introduce themselves and also patient uh, uh, identity uh, and patient has any drug history or before mm hand. -hmm. Everything anesthetic will check also the medication and before induction. Okay, and uh, also the uh, mm -hmm. anesthesia machine. Everything is will check. So it is uh, safe for the patient safety check and uh, mm -hmm. um, and also if patient is weak of more than 500 uh, ml blood so uh, mm -hmm. need uh, uh, blood transfusion to you know liaise with the blood bank mm -hmm. and also uh, to put ID yes, well done, to and so everything it is uh, uh, for uh, safety uh, before mm -hmm. operation and during operation also they will mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know the team member they will introduce and they will check that the what uh, operation uh, mm -hmm. they will do and also indication and everything and also the uh, they will ask the uh, surgeon that is there any uh, concern about the surgery so uh, and any uh, uh, critical step that uh, uh, he will suspect the surgeon and also anesthetist anesthetic also they will ask that. Is there any um, concern from the anesthetic side? And mm -hmm. need more blood, blood transfusion on, and um, yes. uh, and the AS level also they check any medical yes. comorbidity. So it yes. will helpful that during operation there is any of complications. So it will be mm -hmm. uh, you know more complicated uh, and um, uh, to manage it will be difficult also. So that's yes, why yes. it will increase increase the uh, patient. Uh, uh, morbidity and mortality 
and reduce the complication of uh, post-operative complications. And also when uh, that uh, uh, any team member will uh, go out, that means which is signed out. So at the time also they will check that the uh, that uh, any uh, that uh, operation done uh, properly or there is an extra operation uh, done. Uh, any sample to send to the histopathology, this is labeled properly or not. So this is all our safety point. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Yes, so, sure. so, on, so uh, for Dr. Sand. Yes. Yeah. So this is uh, how it will help, uh, you know, the, for that basic technique. This question you can. Sorry. What role the items of WHO checklist and explain how it could add to the patient safety? Here is the WHO yeah. checklist. Similarly, I, I will confirm the patient identity. I will confirm the state while I do the sign in to the patient surgical site. So I will avoid any mistake of doing an operation on another wrong site, like in case of, say, uh, doing a brilliant stick to me. So by confirming the site of the surgery, I will avoid a serious incident of doing the operation on the wrong site. By confirming if the patient is allergic, I will avoid any serious anaphylactic reaction. Well, uh, by confirming in the sign-in if there is the anticipated bleeding, so I will take my precautions and save blood and do close matching. While doing time out and checking, for example, if the patient, uh, the VTE assessment was done or not. So I will avoid the complication of VTE by checking our instrument and if any uh, concern about it so we can uh, we can work and improve this instrument to avoid it affecting any further surgery so simply go through the items of the WHO checklist and tell the examiner how it can improve or can add to the patient safety okay yeah. also don't forget in the preparation of the patient that the patient after taking the anesthetist the anesthetist the anesthesia she will be lying on the left lateral tilt 15 degree here is the preparation for cesarean section then the other question is about uh, the surgical technique and remember this main point in whatever surgery or power to discuss in the exam whatever it is cesarean section or hysterectomy or whatever it could be here general surgical principle add this to your answer, I like to maintain a right operating field, maintain proper exposure, keep tissue handling to minimum, avoid unnecessary dissection and trauma, achieve hemostasis, and speed problem count swab and instrument. Those items need to be added to any answer to any surgery. Maintain a trial field, proper exposure, minimum tissue handling, avoid unnecessary dissection. Anticipate problem, count, swab, and in instrument. Skin incision, we have low transverse skin incision, which is the recommended. It could be Spanish steel incision or joint coin. As you can see in the image above, here is the headline vertical incision, which we did usually we won't need to do this. We can do joint coin or Spanish steel. Joint coin is a straight, three centimeter below the line that joins the anterior superior iliac spine. While Spanish steel is transverse curved and the downward convexity is three centimeters above the simpsis cubus. And the skin incision needs to be at least uh, 15 centimeters. Okay? And we prefer to do low transverse because it is less painful, cosmetically better, and the low risk of bone dehiscence than the vertical incision. After doing the skin incision, we go to the abdomen. So we will enter the abdomen through modified joint cohen entry, meaning that I will open the rear plant plane with my digits. Here is, you need to be careful while opening the subcutaneous because there is risk to injure superficial circumflex so iliac vessels and superficial gastric vessels. The other detail which I ask you is below the rectus muscle. When you open the rectus muscle, don't hook your finger under it to avoid injury of the inferior epigastric vessel. So remember, in the superficial layer, subcutaneous, the superficial vessel, superficial epigastric and superficial circumference. While below the rectus muscle, the inferior epigastric vessels, okay? Here are points of safety. You need to avoid injury of those vessels. So I will enter the abdomen using modified joint cohen, bluntly avoid injury of this vessel in subcutaneous layer. And when I separate the rectus muscle, I will avoid hooking my finger under the rectus muscle 
to avoid trauma to the inferior gastric vessels, then once I will enter the abdomen, I will assess the situation. Any adhesion, where is the bladder, any dexter rotation need to be corrected. So you need to see the field which you are going to operate on. Here is entry the abdomen. After that, again, we need to make sure that proper exposure of where I can do the intrine incision. Adhesion need to be identified and correct the uterus for the rotation. Uterus usually will be rotated to the right, so we'll make it in the center. And don't forget that you are uh, operating with a team. So I will ask the assistant to uh, center the uterus, centralize the uterus. So give the sense that you are working within a team. Ask the, the assistant to do that, correct the next rotation. So the uterus usually will be rotated. I will ask my assistant to make it in the center. Then I'd like to reflect the bladder. So the visceral peritoneum will be identified, the lower part in the lower segment, and I will open it with my fingers, then I will box the doyen retractal to uh, avoid blood of entry, okay? And if the woman has previous cesarean section, I will avoid pushing the bladder down, meaning is that if you find there is many adhesion over the bladder, and as long as you see the lower uterine segment, don't try to dissect the bladder. Open and leave the adhesion as it is. But if this adhesion affecting your fill, you cannot open in the lower segment. At this time, you need to dissect the adhesions. And as one of the doctors said, it will be sharp dissections, not plant. But remember, you need to deliver the baby through It is not in the upper segment. The adhesion is not, and that your incision will be in the lower segment, not a cause or not an edu of the cesarean section. It's still it is in the lower segment, but I, it is it is higher than the recommended. The recommended uterine incision usually is one to two centi below the upper margin of lower segment. So the upper margin of lower segment, I will go one to two centimeters below it. This is if there is no adhesion. But if there is adhesion, I can move just up, but it's still in the lower segment, not in the upper segment. Be careful of this answer. So here is a trine incision, correct the next rotation from the next incision, one, two centimeters below the upper margin of the lower segment. But if it is repeated to the reinfection and the reinfection, I will do it as high as I can, but still in the lower segment, rather than by sectioning the bladder over and down. And if you can see the previous scar, it will be a good option to go through the previous scar. So attempt should be made when you open the uterus to make the membrane intact. Don't open the membrane of the baby while you're doing the trine incision. Try to be to leave it intact because if you do do uh, leave the membrane intact, you will minimize the risk of fetal laceration. As you know, there is two percent risk of skin injury to the baby while you're doing the trine incision. So it is recommended if you can leave the membrane intact. Don't open it while you're doing the trine incision. Then, if the lower segment is well formed. Blunt rather than sharp extension of the uterine incision should be used. So lower segment I will open, then I will do blunt extension and my finger direction to be outward and upward, going to 30. Don't to be downward, you will tear more in the vagina. Okay? And what if we need to do a wide extension? We will go through T incision or T in, uh, inverted T or J incision. The answer is a J incision is the preferred one. If the uterine incision is small and you cannot wipe and you cannot deliver the baby, so I will extend it using J incision. As you can see in this image, the image A, this is the lower uterine incision. The image B, this is the J uterine incision. And it is recommended if we cannot deliver the baby, we can go through J incision. Inverted T is not recommended. It is recommended to do the J. And the last one is the upper segment. Uh, uterine incision. When we can do the upper segment uterine incision, the classic incision, here are the indications. Transverse lie baby and the membrane are ruptured. If there is large cervical fibroid, if the baby is greater and the lower segment is poorly formed, if there is placenta brevia with large vessels in the lower segment, if there is severe market adhesion limiting the access to lower segments. If I can't access the lower segment, so can you can go through the upper segment, but at least I will try. I will try to do the dissection. Blunt cesarean hysterectomy, in case of placenta accreta, in crater, per crater, complicating placenta brevia, and in pre mortem cesarean section. Here are the indications of classic uterine incision. After that, I will deliver the baby. The fetal life would be stabilized. I will ask the assistant to do 
fundal pressure, so he will stabilize the baby, the fetal head is delivered, and you need to mention it is delivered in occipital transverse position by gentle lateral flexion. Okay, and if it is during the contraction, I don't deliver during contraction, wait until the contraction stops, then deliver the baby. And the knowing factor will need to be removed before delivering the baby head. How to deliver the placenta? Don't forget five units of oxytocin, syntocinone, to be given immediately at delivery of the anterior shoulder. And avoid manual removal of the placenta, which is point of safety, because it increases the blood loss, infection, endometritis, and raises isosynthesization. Uh, but we will wait for placental separation. And during that time, I will secure the utrotomy angles, and I will secure any bleeding points with green armitage forceps, and after separation of the placenta, I will deliver it with continuous cord traction. Then I will check the uterine cavity to make sure the cavity is empty, no membrane is still inside the uterus. Then uterine closure, emphasize that it is recommended to be intraperitoneal. Intraperitoneal is recommended. I will secure the angle third with full thickness sutures, and before closing the lower segment, I will make sure that there is no plating within the placental bed, and the closure will be two layers. I will use continuous vitreous sutures, second layer to be Lambert sutures. And in case of classic cesarean infection, the repair will be in three layers. The first two will be interrupted sutures, while the last one, we will use monophylamine sutures to prevent adhesions. Finally, we will secure hemostasis. And the question which I ask, will we both drain? As a part of enhance the recovery program, we will try to avoid drain as we can. But if the patient is fully anticoagulant, or if there is a history of bleeding disorder, or if it is difficult surgery with evidence of coagulopathy, we can leave drain. And it needs, as long as it is intraperitoneal, to be soft, large pore, and non suction. If you use suction, can, it can be used only for rectal sheath drain. But if you do that, you will close the peritoneum. As you know, we not close the visceral operator peritoneum. But if you are going to do or to put suction drain to the rectal sheath, close the peritoneum. Okay? So then we will close the rectal sheath with continuous number one, bully filamine sutures. And the subcutaneous to be closed if more than two centimeters. But if less, we will not close the subcutaneous. And finally, we will close the skin, whatever method which is uh, uh, accepted by the patient, whatever it is, the sub Q or with the tablet, uh, tablet. So the method of skin closure needs to be discussed with the woman. And finally, don't forget swab and instrument accounts. Hopefully, it is clear now. Anyone have questions? Let me know. Uh, Dr. Ashwa, that regarding yes. the uh, drains, uh, I didn't understand that one. See, so you, you mean to say that if you are putting the drain in the rectus sheet, uh, in the uh, that peritoneum, whether to close the peritoneum or not, uh, that I didn't get it actually. If it is intraperitoneal drain, mm. I mean that usually because you are afraid that the prime angle may be leading intraperitoneal, so it will be non suction. But in case drain, because you are afraid from rectus sheet, if you need to do suction. Uh, the hematoma or what is above the sheath, and you need to do suction drain. You need to put suction drain at this time. First, close the peritoneum. Don't leave the. It, anyhow, it is about but the, the standard sheet, is no? non suction drain. Drain opens. No, no. What I am saying is, anyhow, the rectus sheet is, is being clear? closed. No, no. I understand. I see. Sorry. Uh, Peritone. No, if, if you are putting the suction drain in the rectus area, that is almost we have sutured the rectus sheet already. It is in the it is it will be the suction drain will be between the rectus sheet and the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. That's all. Then why we are worried about something inside a peritoneum? It is a rectus drain. If you like, if in case if you are putting an intraperitoneal drain, that is be, beyond that time, and that time we have to close. It's only the visceral peritoneum which we need to close because uh, even if you, I, I I understand your point. Even if you close the rectus sheet, you said why to close the peritoneum. This is your question. Yeah, that's right? what, yeah, that's what I yeah, I, that's what I didn't get Remember, it. Because any it, once rectus sheet is closed, finish, we are not into the abdomen, into the cavity. It's only superficial. No. What is the guarantee is that the, the rectus sheet will not the uh, the hidden within that scar tissue you did? It is not now healed. Still there is point of not healing. Or even one of you such as material broke. So to be safe, close the peritoneum. 
Okay. There is spaces between your sutures and material. You 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 leave at least one centimeter between every sutures. So close the yeah, peritoneum yeah. before putting this suction drain. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, got, I got you. Know. Yeah, I got you. Know. Yeah. Thank you. You will. Any more questions? We move to the last case. Shall we? Okay. Who would like to chair? Can I do, Dr. Asha? Who would like to do the last case? Yeah, Dr. Sorby. Yes. Yes. Okay. You have now two minutes. Okay. There is another paper after reading it to me. <laughs> Next slide. Can I see the first line? Dr. Asha, can I see the first slide? This is the first one. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello, I'm Surbhi, ST5. And you? I'm sorry, the, the FY2. How would you like me to call you? Yes, yeah, sir, it's fine. Okay. So, Sarah, as I understand that you have joined the department recently, is it? Yes. Yeah. How are you finding the department? Yeah, it's a very nice development. Everyone is supportive here. Yeah. In case you have any problem, please feel free to come to us. We all are there okay. to help you, Sarah. Thank okay. you. So, yeah, Sarah, I can see that you have filled a consent form for elective cesarean. Yeah. Hey, that's very good. So, uh, Sarah, have you filled the consent form before? Uh, no, actually, it was my first time. Is something went wrong? Oh, no, no, no. Just we are going to discuss the consent form. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sarah, now we will be taking up this consent form, which you have just filled, and we will go along with it, and we will see how we can make it better. Will that be fine? Okay. Okay. So, uh, Sarah, what do you understand by valid consent? Do you have any idea about it? No, actually, a consent it doesn't. Uh... Sorry, no voice. In our medical school, and I feel that we didn't have idea about this consent. Uh, apart from my not having any more knowledge about that. Okay, okay, no problem. So, 
a valid consent is always involuntary and it should be well informed to the patient and patient is always given the patient information leaflet around about it and always told about the risk benefits and the alternatives of the procedure okay and we also see the mental capacity mm -hmm. of the patient is the patient mental capacity uh, he if uh, he or she has the mental capacity he can give the consent for that am i clear sara hello can you please repeat any one point of the valid consent yes as a patient understand the information and could retain it and use this information to take her decision to communicate well with me yeah very good you're an excellent learner sara i must say so uh, sara uh, like you have filled up the consent there are certain things which you have done very well like you have written the proposed procedure name of the proposed procedure as lscs but don't you think if we write the full form like lower segment cesarean section it would be very good the patient will also be able to understand isn't it oh yeah i will change it okay yeah very good and you have written the name and you have also written the date of birth of the patient that is very good and mm -hmm. uh, Coming to this, the intended benefits, you have written that to deliver a baby safely through a cut in the abdomen and the uterus. If we write mm -hmm. it like through a cut in the tummy and the womb, don't you think it will be more understandable to the patient? Okay. Okay, so it will be very good if we make certain changes in this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then coming mm -hmm. to the risk, Sara. We can see that uh, you have written very nicely serious or frequently occurring risks as hemorrhage, blood clots, infection, uh, injury to the bladder bowel, which is very good. Uh, if we write it like there are certain serious risks separately and the frequent risks separately, it will be more understandable to the patients. Okay. Like bleeding, infection, and pain, we can mm -hmm. mention as the frequent risk. Actually, I can't remember what is clots. frequent and what is serious. I'm not being a... Okay, that is I, quite I can't understandable. Remember what is frequent and what is serious? Actually, I have been asked by the midwife to fill the consent. That's why I proceed with this consent. Okay, okay. So, uh, did the midwife force you to fill the consent, and you didn't? uh know how to do it is it like that no she didn't force me but i feel that it's my responsibility to take consent from the patient this is something simple oh. that i can do okay that's very good of you that you you have shown your efforts to fill it so we are all here to help you so no problem in that sara so um serious risk are like you have written these blood clots and the injury to the bladder bowel these come as serious risk and the frequently as occurring risk can be as bleeding, infection, and pain. Am I clear? Yeah, clear. And this cut to the baby, which you have written, this is also uh, one of the frequent risks to the baby, cut on the baby's skin. Okay, it is not a rare risk. Okay, Sara? Oh, and regarding yeah, the percentage, Sara, we also don't remember the percentage sometimes. So we can refer to the RCUG guideline also on the system. And then we can put down on the consent form. Okay. Okay. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good. Okay. So uh, now coming to this, the patient um, leaflet has been provided. We should give the patient information leaflet to the patient and take this also so that patient has all the idea, all the risk and the benefits. And if she has any queries, she can further ask us. Okay. Mm. And also written like general anesthesia or regional anesthesia, which is very good. And you have signed the form also, which is very good. And you have written your name. And it will be very good if you write it uh, more clearly. It will be more legible because it is a legal document as well. Uh, we might need to produce it further in the court. In any case, it happens. So we are safe and it is everything should be legible in it. Okay, Sara. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Am I clear, Sara? Yes, clear. Okay. So, uh, anything specific you want to ask about this consent to me? No. And I'm sorry about the mistake that I did in the consent. 
No, no, it's okay. We all go through this, Sarah, and we are all there to help you. We can learn it further so that to improve it. And now we will uh, fill this form together. We will go to the patient and make the patient understand. And we will also um, tell her the alternatives which she can have, like normal delivery, and what will be the risk mm -hmm. if she cannot go through this procedure as well. I will give you the RCOG GTG guideline also regarding this. And uh, RCOG has the consent and why for the cesarean you can go through that okay and uh, mm -hmm. there is a strategy video also which shows about the consent and the, this procedure because you need to be very sound with the procedure and one thing more sarah uh, this consent mm -hmm. should be signed and taken by the person who is doing the procedure or who has been trained to do this consent and who knows what are the risk benefit alternatives everything am i clear sarah oh yeah clear so what can i do if someone asks me to do a consent i will apologize you can just what is... no you can always come to us we are there to help and anyone who is doing the procedure can take the consent till you get the get your training done for the consent okay sarah okay. yes okay okay and uh, please go through this consent advice of the rcog as well okay so um Will you like me to give the feedback, Sarah? How did it go? Anything which I can do to improve oh. your learning about this? Yeah, it was a very nice session. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank yeah, you so it, much, it me Sarah, a lot of and for you yeah, also. I'm thankful for you. It was a very good as a first attempt from you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, wow, we still have one minute and 20 seconds. You did it very well. And you mentioned most of the points in this station and you follow the teaching approach and you were aware about the situation here that she's recently joined the unit and you you are aware that it is not formal teaching. The candidate is not asking you to tell her about teaching, about the consent. You are the one who noticed that the consent has been signed by a junior trainee and you are the one who would like to discuss with her about the consent. So here is the situation awareness. Don't enter the cubicle and tell that I know that you are the one who would like to discuss about consent. I was surprised that the role player will tell you no. I don't want to take a teaching about consent. So be careful of the situation. What is the situation here? And you did it very well before. And you continuously check understanding and ask me to repeat what you did. And you provide me about sources, how to go through uh, the consent and how to know about uh, benefit and risk of cesarean section. So you did it very well. Apart from only uh, try to put agenda in your session. Tell him that today and the agenda is written here in the station. I will give you a feedback about the consent you did. And I will give you the principles of obtaining valid consent and uh, uh, support you here in the ongoing. So tell here, for example, uh, uh, within a short time, I'm going to take a consent from another patient. So it will be a great opportunity for you to come with me and see me how I'm taking the consent. So what agenda for your session? This is the only part you miss. You ask about the feedback, both for you as a candidate, and you close it very friendly. I I don't I, I couldn't feel that you undermine or blame the candidate for this consent. So your communication also was very good. Thank you for your sharing. Thank you so much, Dr. Rasha. You're welcome. So here in this station, when I read it outside, I have only two minutes. So I'd like to be aware that this trainee recently joined the unit as part of the situation awareness. And remember also this cesarean for page, you need also to, to add in the consent, the cesarean in the benefit is because it is for page. It is not written in the consent is the candidate taken. And also that you notice that the consent from the station has already been filled by the tyranny. So here I understand what is the situation. I am the one who want to give her teaching about the consent, not the candidates. Then I uh, will highlight in my mind the main point so I will put those in my agenda. I will give her feedback. I will explain the principle of obtaining valid consent and support the trainee in her ongoing education. So important point here that I follow the teaching approach, introducing myself with name and role, and uh, checking her understanding, asking her if it is the first time you take consent or not, and uh, putting agenda. So for the teaching approach, as we know. 
situation awareness recently joined the unit i am the one who will give her the teaching check the understanding as you did and avoid blaming atmosphere as you did also and the information in the concept need to be understandable to the patient so you need to comment on lscs which is written tell her that we need to avoid abbreviation in the concept so it is better to be written cesarean section not abbreviation and then explain with her the benefits and risk of the cesarean section and explain to her as you said what is meaning by valid consent to be voluntary informed and the patient has the capacity three point voluntary informed and patient have the capacity and what is the meaning of the patient have capacity that the patient understands the information relevant to the decision can retain that information can use it to make the decision have good communication to make a decision and as you said, the consent need to be taken by someone who can either undertake the procedure or has been trained to take that. So you answer. Someone asked me to take a consent. So here is the way when I ask you, what can I do if your proper answer? Yeah, you can finish. And the consent need to be taken by someone who is trained or who can undertake the procedures. So it is not advisable to take the consent without previous training and you can provide support for the candidate by telling as I'm going to obtain consent from another patient. So after taking the patient permission, it will be a great opportunity for you to come with me to learn more about obtaining consent. So you're supporting the trainee in her training. If a colleague asks you to share information or obtain consent from a patient on their behalf, you must be satisfied that you have the necessary knowledge and the skills to do. If you are not, you should explain this and seek support. This is copy based from GMC, good medical standing. It is written like this. If anyone asks you to do something, take consent, give information to a patient, and you feel that you are not satisfied by your knowledge or skill, don't do that. Apologize and ask for support. This is also the answer for the role player question. And here is the proper cesarean section consent. It is written cesarean section. We avoid abbreviation. And here, the benefit deliver the baby through a cut in the abdomen or tummy, whatever, or in the womb. And here you can add because it is breach. And also, doctor, take care that you uh, you said uh, we need to tell the patient about the option of vaginal delivery. Take care because the situation here is different. You are about to carry the cesarean section. The patient already already making the decision to have a cesarean section. So be aware of the situation also. It is not the case that you will still discuss with the patient about as a vagina, vagina and you will not write this in the consent she is already made the decision and she's about to sign the consent and then as you said we can categorize the risk into serious or frequent risk and here are the serious risks and the frequent risk the candidate uh, make mistake that he write uh, the block plot risk wrongly he write it is one percent but it is one of the serious risks it's only four to sixteen per one thousand and also he writes the cut in the baby's skin So you picked up these mistakes and the point is rare, although it is 2% and corrected and it is very good. And then you can uh, add also that he mentioned only the extra procedure is blood transfusion, but still another procedures can be done like hysterectomy or repair of any damaged organ. Then you discussed about the anesthesia and give the patient liquids. Here is the proper consent for the cesarean section. You did it very well. Thank you for your training. Anyone have any question related to this station? Any question here? Yeah, Dr. Rasha, so alternatives are not to be mentioned if it is a cesarean we are going to understand. I thought that we need to mention the alternatives in the consent. No, not in the consent. She made the decision. You already take the consent for cesarean section, not for vaginal delivery. So you will not tell her about the options now. It is not the, the place to discuss option. She already opted for cesarean section. You can discuss only what are associated procedures that can be done, like hysterectomy or repair of uh, uh, damaged organ or blood transfusion, but not discuss about the options. You are about yeah. to carry for here a cesarean section. Am I make sense? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any questions, dears?
Okay, thank you for your attendance. Uh, Doctor Doctor Rasha, that one something yes. GMC recommendation something you have no? Can you can you?